Hello everyone and welcome back. Now for the 45th episode I'm going to analyze none other than Peter Quill, also known as Star-Lord, one of the main protagonists in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The iconic space pirate of the MCU who along with his friends go to help anyone, Peter Quill could easily be viewed by everyone as, well, just another example of a space pirate throughout our media, and in this episode I'm going to analyze all the information given about him throughout the films, to better understand Peter Quill and his journey from an orphan on Earth to the iconic intergalactic hero that he has ultimately become. Now it offer a ado, let's dive in. Peter Jason Quill was born in the United States, Missouri to be more specific in 1980, to his mother Meredith Quill. Growing up, he was also taken care of his grandparents and uncle from his mother's side, as he never met or heard anything about his father, only the fact that his mother claimed that his father was from the stars. And tragically, his mother eventually died in 1988 due to her cancer. And alone and completely heartbroken by this, he eventually was found by a ranger, a space pilot named Yododonta, who officially took Peter in and made him one of his crew. And for years he became part of the Ravagers, with Yondu becoming some sort of an adoptive father to Peter, and he trained in order to steal, use the blaster, and eventually, well, made it just to steal. But nevertheless, he became somewhat of an intergalactic criminal, as he was chased by various intergalactic civilizations, such as the Nova Empire. And eventually, he began to detach himself from Yondu and pursue a solo career. And finally, by 2014, he officially sent himself to steal the orb from the planet of Morag, whose orb appears every 300 years. And upon stealing the orb, he came in conflict with not only the Nova Corps, but also with the, the rock Kree warlord, Rona the Accuser, who wanted to take the orb to Thanos, the Mad Titan, in order for him to bring about a full eradication of Xandar. Of course, all of this resulted in Peter being sent to jail, alongside with the ones that will change his life forever. Three mercenaries, Drag the Destroyer, Ratchet Raccoon and Groot, and eventually Gamora, the daughter of Thanos, who ultimately all came together to escape from jail and to confront Ronan, and they eventually developed some sort of an unlikely bond with one another. And thus, they began to come together in order to form the Ganyas of the Galaxy. A group of interstellar anti-heroic space pirates that ultimately fight against the forces of evil and try to help everyone around the way. And as they officially managed to team up with Yondu and the Ravagers, and Peter managed to make amends with Yondu upon anything that happened between them, as well as to make amends within the Nova Empire in order to stop Ronan the Accuser from destroying Xandar. And upon realizing that the orb has an infinity stone, the power stone to be more specific, they want Ronan managed to take his power in order to both destroy Xandar and to kill Thanos. The Ganyas managed to arrive in time, managed to stop him, and Peter literally survived by holding an infinity storm in his hand in order to, in order to finally kill the maniac once and for all. And thus, the Ganyas of the galaxy were officially born, with Yondu remaining at odds with Peter and with the Guardians, but still, since technically he was still very proud of Peter managing to come so far in life. And with, from here on, the Guardians became somewhat under the protectorate of the Nova Corps, officially do, traveling across the stars in order to do both good and sometimes bad things. However, two months later, in August, he eventually came in contact and eventual conflict with the one man that became responsible for everything in his life, his biological father, Ego the Living Planet, a literal living planet in an ancient celestial who is revealed to have impregnated Meredith and ultimately gave birth to Peter. And while he initially managed to convince Peter that he cares about him, in the end Ego revealed his true colors. He created Peter in order to have a second celestial, so he can ex continue the expansion, so he can conquer the universe and destroy all life. And while initially Ego managed to brainwash Peter into believing him, all of that fell apart with the revelation that Ego is the one who put that tumor in Meredith's head in order to kill her. And with this, Peter and the Ganyas came together in order to stop Ego and save the universe. And they managed to succeed in doing so, and acquire a new member, Mantis, who later to be revealed to be Peter's sister from Ego. And tragically, and they lost another one, Yondu, who ultimately sacrificed himself in order to save Peter from Ego. Thus, officially realizing that Yondu was in fact the father that Peter was looking for all along. Things all went back to normal, but by 2018, after they managed to save Thor from space, they ultimately came in conflict with none other than Thanos himself, who started his quest for the Infinity Stones in order to eradicate all life, and they managed to kidnap Gamora and ultimately sacrifice her own worm to gain the Soul Stone. And meanwhile, the Ganyas managed to team up with the Avengers and the Masters of Mystic Arts in order to lure Thanos on Titan and to stop his madness once and for all. And for a while, they actually succeeded. But tragically, because of Peter's own anger upon Gamora's death, 
e altă menimene știu să ne apem ca o stea nostru în break free and to retrieve all the stones and defeat in the middle process. And finally, when Thanos returned back on Earth in order to retrieve all the stones and snap everyone back from existence, almost all the remaining Guardians except for Ratchet and now Nebula were all snapped from existence, as well as the Doctor Strange and Spider-Man, leaving only Iron Man and Nebula on the planet, where they managed to survive for roughly three weeks and found their way back on Earth. Thus, they, uh, they eventually managed to go to uh, confront Thanos, only to reveal that he destroyed the Infinity Stones, so they won't serve as temptation. And for five years, the Guardians of the Galaxy remain only from two members, who remain in complete touch with the Avengers about what is going on. And finally, by 2023, they managed to travel to each one of them to separate realities, in order to uh, retrieve stones from different timelines, and in order to uh, create a new Infinity Gauntlet and bring everyone back to existence. Only to come in conflict with an alternate version of Thanos, who try to use the stones to destroy the universe. Thankfully, they managed to stop him, throw everyone back, and things were all be- went back to normal. And the Guardians were all joined by Thor, who was eventually abandoned one year later in 2024, even the fact that his narcissistic personality and his personal conflict with Peter Quill. And now, before I go any further, we all should stop and ask ourselves: Is Peter good? The reason why I'm asking is why Sunday night that he is quite. Uh, of a jerk and very much immature and irresponsible. He is nevertheless a very pure-hearted man. man. He genuinely cares about others and he even the fact that he was willing to stop his evil father not to save the universe. Ultimately, not only meaning that Peter actually cares about everyone, but he genuinely loves Gamora and he accepted Mantis and becomes his sister. But she hid the truth from Peter because she was afraid that he would associate her with evil given the fact that he killed his mother. And thus ultimately proving the answer is definitely yes, Peter is genuinely a good person. And well, finally by 2025, they all came in conflict with none other than the High Evolutionary, Ratchet's creator who tried to take him back, not to use his DNA for his evil experiments. Thankfully they managed to stop him, and all the Guardians went back to their separate ways, with Peter returning back on Earth in order to visit his grandfather and to start anew. So in the end, who is Peter Quill? He's nothing more but a simple man who has lost so much throughout his life, a man that will ultimately finally redefine himself and pursue a path of heroism, a man that will confront his dark lineage and manage to overcome it and save everyone and everything he loved, a man that could easily be called as one of the greatest heroes ever made in cinema. Thank you all for joining this new episode in today's analysis. I hope everybody enjoyed. Please don't forget to give a like and subscribe everyone and have a nice day. Child, things will get brighter. Listen to these words. Ooh, child, things are gonna get easier. Ooh, child, things will get brighter. Now bring it down hard. Someday, we'll put it together. What are you easier. doing? Dance off, bro. Me and you. Come on.